I know you're working on a, on a project in, in the Atlanta area called the uh, Parkside Crossing. I wanted to get a little bit more detailed in, in how you uh, go about looking at projects and re repositioning them uh, to do a value add, uh, mm -hmm. you know, specifically for investors, but how you're improving neighborhoods uh, and then at the same time and improving uh, the property values and uh, again, adding value, but at the same time, adding value for the people that are going to be living there as well. Yeah, for sure. No, absolutely. Thank you so much. You know, it's funny. Um, a lot of times right now, especially in the you know commercial space or more specifically multifamily, people are like, well, you know, I don't know that there's any deals to be had or, you know, it's so competitive. The key is though, having the right relationships and being the right um, operators, you know? So like for us, as an example, we are in the majority of markets we operate in, we are the top, you know, one, two or three speed dial guy, you know, like in that Atlanta market, we have been probably one of the most active buyers, probably buying, 16 properties in the last uh you know 24 30 months something like that and so the folks that we work with know that prosperity capital is going to execute on what we say and so that's got a lot of value and so like this particular property parkside crossing that we closed on uh you know last quarter of 2021 it was where it was owned by a father and son ownership group. They'd owned it for a bunch of years. Uh, really, their business model was just kind of, you know, milk the cash flow, don't really fix much up. Um, and everybody's got a different model. And so they had a number that like, you know, hey, if we could sell for this number and have certainty of close within this particular time frame, we would do that deal. And so that was brought to us exclusively uh, to say, Hey, these guys want to sell. We, you know, we've done a ton of deals with you. If you can hit this number, they're sellers. And so we were able to jump in, underwrite it. You know, our, you know, we knew the people that were already managing it. They'd worked with us on other assets and we had our other team drive the property. And then our acquisitions folks worked through everything. I was able to comb through, you know, all of the data, and then also talk with the existing folks that were managing it, who I know, and really be able to determine, man, this is going to be a great opportunity. It's a great value. And so, you know, that opportunity came to us and most people out there never even saw it. And so that's first and foremost, what I would say is, you know, having the expertise, having the reputation and not some BS, you know, Facebook fake reputation, but the yeah. real deal where guys know when they're bringing a 20, 30, $40 million uh, asset that it's like, Hey, these are the guys. And so that's where, you know, people say, Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen deals. It's like, well, I would also probably say you're probably not necessarily in that same positioning to see those deals. Um, you no, know, that, that's such a great point, Randy. I mean, I don't know if, if everyone can, can see that and appreciate that. Like, they, if they would have taken that property to market, they could have gotten probably, you know, a couple million more for it. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, we, you would have had a lot of buyers coming in the ability, you know, and there are a lot of mom and pop sellers who just want certainty of clothes. Yeah. And when you create that reputation of doing what you say you're going to do in certainty of clothes, you get great deals that no one ever sees and you, and you get to come in at a lower pr uh, price point than anyone else ever would. And that is, yeah. that is amazing. Yeah. And we just got another one here in Tampa, like a hundred unit deal that, uh, you know, we paid, uh, you know, I, it, it's probably a fair market value for the price and it was off market. And again, same story brought to us. Hey, if you can hit this number, these guys are a seller. And the key though, is what you just said is true. If that property would go out to the market, it probably go up by another 5,000 a door or, you know, half million to $750,000. So, you know, and by having that reputation that would enable that property to come to us. So now, and again, we paid them fair market value, 
But I mean, good Lord, we're going to be able to take the rents from like a thousand dollars to 1450. I mean, because they wow. just haven't been, you know, operating the property. They haven't renovated and the markets changed all around them. And so again, that's a phenomenal thing. So again, it's not like we, you know, every time now Parkside, yeah, we bought it at 85,000 a door. I mean, good Lord, by the time we close the market, it's probably 105 and it's even beyond that now. Um, but that's so critical. And, and, and we've spent probably hundreds of thousands of dollars kind of eating crap sandwiches on deals that have given us that reputation that we're one of the smooth operators. There's no headaches, you know, because again, sometimes sellers are wonky and people do weird stuff and, you know, oh, they stiff you for like what's 40 grand and people's egos get in the way. And we, you know, I just say, you know, I talk with our guy we're working with and like, look, okay, it's 40 grand. It's not right. Da, da, da. Hey, look, I'll eat it on this deal. Um, but like, we got to make sure that we don't encounter this next time. And those things add up to create that opportunity. So it's, you know, not easy to get in that position, but praise the Lord, it's a good position to be in.